What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, according to Sports Illustrated, undefeated three division world champion superstar boxer Javante Tank Davis, who is now 27 wins, no losses, no draw, 25 big wins by way of knockout. He is 27 years of age, five foot five with a 67 inch arm reach. With that said, uh, this past Saturday, Rolando Roli Romero, undefeated WBA lightweight title contender, uh, took on Javante Tank Davis. They are stable mates as well, okay? And Javante Tank Davis, he got a brutal six round knockout victory over uh, Rolando Roli Romero. And so uh, with that said, you know, um, this was at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Javante Tank Davis won his first world title at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. And Javante Tank Davis on the flip side of that has, uh, when he lost his title on the scale, he re-won it again at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. So uh, this is essentially Javante Tank Davis' second home. So with that said, Javante Tank Davis, uh, um, according to Sports Illustrated, has now broken the live gate record at the Barclays Center for events, okay? Uh, and it's being reported that he did $5 million gate at the Barclays Center, okay? A $5 million gate, and that broke the record uh, for gates at the Barclays Center. That speaks volumes, okay? Uh, Javante Tank Davis is a huge draw. This just uh, uh, this is just a testament to his star status because yes, Rolando Roli Romero, who came in to fight, 14 wins, no losses, no draw, 12 wins by way of knockout, 26 years of age, five foot eight with a 68 inch arm reach. Uh, he came in to fight, and Roli Romero sells the fight. Okay, uh, he is a mouthpiece. He's must see TV, and for sure, he sells the fight. Okay, he's a he he's he's. He's a, a must-see TV. There's no other way to describe Rolando Roli Romero. So with that said, you know, uh, he, that being Rolando Roli Romero, you know, he sold the fight. You know, you look at the numbers that he did, the interviews that he did, you know, uh, everybody was interested to see what he had to say. Uh, so for sure, he sold this fight, okay? Um, but outside of the boxing world and outside of the fact that Roli is a mouthpiece for the sport of boxing and it, a huge part of this, Javante Tank Davis has been selling out the Barclays Center, sold out the Staples Center in LA. Uh, he sold out, you know, um, Atlanta, the eight, uh, State Farm Arena in Atlanta. Uh, he sells out, obviously, in his hometown of Baltimore, Maryland. You know, uh, but he's a massive draw, okay? And this is just another testament to it. Now, obviously, the Barclays Center is just three hours from Baltimore. It's right up the street from Baltimore, you know. Um, and it reported that it maxed out the capacity as well, okay? Now we know that the Barclays Center holds uh, about uh, 19,000 fans in the arena. And according to Sports Illustrated, and according to the Barclays Center, this is not according to Leonard Ellaby, CEO of Mayweather Promotions. This is not according to uh, um, uh, PBC, Premier Boxing Champions, uh, founder and advisor Al Heyman. This is not according to uh, uh, Showtime President of Sports, Steven Espinosa. This is according to Sports Illustrated and the Barclays Center themselves, okay? I reached out to the Barclays Center um, and they said the second highest earning uh, sporting event at the Barclays Center for Live Gate was, uh, uh, for boxing for the Live Gate was uh, $3 million. So he, he by far exceeded the number uh, uh, that was the highest number, okay? According to the person I spoke to uh, at the Barclays Center, they stated that the the second highest gate that they have tallied as far as boxing goes was uh, three million, three million live gates. So Javante Tank Davis exceeded that by two million dollars. Now, uh, I you know uh, they told me don't quote them on it. You know uh, they didn't know for sure, but it was around three million dollars, and his number is around five million dollars, right? And so. If that to, to hold to be true, then he exceeded it by two, by two million dollars, right? Well, that's a big number. Okay, that's a big difference. Okay, and uh, again, like I said, outside of the sport of boxing, you know, uh, yeah. Now, Roly started to spew over into casual fans because of his comments and uh, um, because of his statements made. So yeah, he's his his aura and his you know his confidence. You know, got people to believe. Oh, this this dude could actually beat Javante Tank Davis, and the way he was talking that he's going to knock out Tank in one round, and 
you know, uh, so it was more so people paying to see Javante Tank Davis lose. Okay, Roly Romero's the guy that's going to beat Javante Tank Davis. Okay, and so because of his uh, uh, mouthpiece and the fact that essentially he was selling the fight, right? And so with that said, you know, uh, that was big. You know, that was a big part of it. But then, like I said, it, it spewed over into the casual fans. But for the most part, you know, it was a hardcore boxing fan fight. But this just goes to show the star power of Javante Tank Davis, okay? Uh, and the drawing power of Javante Tank Davis. And it's impressive, okay? Um, because the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, is a massive draw. New York itself uh, is a massive draw, okay? It's the biggest market in the, in the world, right? Uh, so... I, I, I said this after the fight That The weigh-in was outside It was 85 degrees outside The sun was beaming down And it was packed Right And it was it was supposed to rain It was forecast of rain But it was still packed at the weigh-in right? And um, it just went viral right? So with that said I would make this his home Permanently Moving forward right? Why not I would make this Javante Tank Davis home moving forward permanently. I would find a date like the 4th of July and make an annual fight date for Javante Tank Davis that weekend, right? Um, because so many people come into New York City around that time. If he's doing numbers like this, now imagine if you put him around a, a holiday like 4th of July. You know, here we have uh, the Puerto Rican Day Parade and uh, Puerto Rican fighters, they fight on those dates at Madison Square Garden because the parade is in the city. Okay, so uh, people, they, they, you know, uh, you know, they, they, they go in drones to Madison Square Garden. You had Tito Trinidad used to do it, and then you had Miguel Cotto used to do it at Madison Square Garden. Now uh, they're building up Edgar Belinga. Uh, he's going to fight on that date, you know, so, but that's the date, you know, they surround it around that date. If Tank doing these numbers right now without a holiday, imagine if you annually fights around the 4th of July, create his own date and fight on that day. That would be enormous, right? Uh, so with that said, we gotta see how it unfolds, how this plays out, you know, um, but I would love to see it, love to see it. So let's see how this works out and unfolds and plays out, you know, um, but it looks like he could fight, you know, uh, Ali Rivera, you know, uh, in his next fight, it looks like, um, you know, obviously people wanna see him in the ring with the likes of Shakur Stevenson, undefeated two division world champion, who's the unified super featherweight world champion, Olympic silver medalist. But Shakur Stevenson fights on ESPN with top ranked legendary promoter, Bob Arum. Uh, so they would have to do a joint promotion and Tank just stated that he has no interest in going down to 130. Uh, right now he's comfortable at 35. And then, you know, uh, he's the mandatory for the winner of the highly anticipated undisputed showdown that's gonna take place this upcoming Saturday. Uh, with um, undefeated WBC lightweight world champion superstar boxer Devin the Dream Haney who is 27 wins, no loss and no draw, 15 wins by way of knockout 23 years of age, 5 foot 9 and a half with a 72 inch arm reach he's going to be taking on uh, undefeated newly crowned Australian star boxer George Cambosis Jr. who is 20 wins, no loss and no draw 10 wins by way of knockout 28 years of age, 5 foot 9 with a 69 inch arm reach, they're going to fight uh, June 4th in the States Australia the fight is taking place so it'll be June 5th in Australia so it'll be Sunday in Australia so again Javante Tank Davis is, wants the winner he stated he wanted to fight the winner of that fight but again there's a hurdle uh, both guys well mainly right now Devin Haney has an exclusive deal with ESPN top rank and Bob Arum so he signed the top rank uh, then you have George Cambosis he signed the Lou DeBella promotions but uh, Lou DeBella doesn't have a network in which to place his fighters on, so he does his business now. It seems like his relationship with the PBC is maybe estranged, uh, and so he's having his fighters fight on ESPN. And not to mention, uh, Devin Haney has a rematch clause that if he beats George Cambosis Jr., he has to immediately rematch him in Australia, okay? So looks like he's going to be tied up, depending upon how he beats George Cambosis, in my opinion. Uh, I think that, you know, um, uh, if he dominates him and stops him in, in dominating fashion and don't call for an immediate rematch, I still don't see Tank Davis fighting Devin Haney. And the reason I say that is because of um, 
Uh, the reason I say that is because that they would much rather put uh, Lomachenko in the ring with Devin Haney. If you ESPN, you want to keep it in-house. You just had, you just signed him to a lucrative deal. He beats George Cambosis. That means the undisputed belts are with you and ESPN. Uh, why would you want to venture outside of that to, to uh, risk losing it? Now, I personally think that uh, Devin Haney's skill set is one skill set that can offset and beat Javante Tate Davis. But as a business for ESPN, uh, do you want to uh, uh, put your fighter in that position? More than likely not, right? Because uh, uh, you would rather keep it against two-time Olympic gold medalist, three-division world champion, former unified lightweight world champion, Ukrainian superstar boxer Vasil Lomachenko, in-house. Uh, remember, George Cambosis Jr. was looking and lobbying to fight uh, uh, um, Lomachenko to begin with. He didn't want to fight Devin Haney. It was just that ESPN and Bob Arum were, were unwilling to uh, support George Cambosis fighting anybody else other than Lomachenko or Devin Haney. Plan A, Lomachenko, but Lomachenko we know is 10 toes down in the Ukraine defending his country uh, in the unfortunate situation that's taking place. And uh, so he's not available. So they let it be known that it has to be Devin Haney or we don't want no involvement and Lou DiBella doesn't have a network to place his fighters on. So with that said, right, that took uh, uh, anybody else off the table, although George Cambosis is telling people that, oh, well, I, I chose him. No, he didn't. He didn't have a choice. Okay. Um, and so with that said, why would ESPN at this point in time say, okay, we're going to go out and do business with uh, uh, PBC and do a joint network and all of that when they can keep it in-house. So I think that you would probably see Javante Tank Davis. I like the kid Rivera, Ali Rivera. Uh, he's the mandatory, right? Um, so seems like that just makes sense. That's a no-brainer. Uh, and we see Tank Davis is a massive draw, so he can sell wherever he goes. Um, so expect it to be another in-house fight, PBC fight. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. But according to Sports Illustrated and reports, Javante Tank Davis has broken the Broccoli Center's uh, record with $5 million gate. And he did uh, max it out. They, they hold about 19 to 20,000 and he had the capacity, he had the max amount of people that could fit in it. So let's see what happens moving forward. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button, drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Raw. Make sure you like your shitty videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.